I'm here with Mark Nelson, and this show is about vintage. And Mark, you have a really great way of highlighting some of these vintage pieces that we might be using. Yeah, it's a great way to add some color to pieces, old pieces too. Yeah, and found objects, right? That's right. Cool. Um, what this is is in um, it's a paint that you can paint on, and it's an acrylic hybrid. So what you can do is you can paint it on and then cook it in an oven, an oven dedicated to um, not food. Okay, yeah, so if you have an don't extra put it in your kitchen oven. oven in your studio or like a toaster oven or right, something. Right, right. And if you bake it at 320 degrees for about 30 minutes, it's going to be permanent. Wow. It's very so tough. we had a show last season where we talked about painting with nail polish mm -hmm. onto some metal components. Right. So this is, the finish might be similar, but this is way more permanent and it's non toxic. Non toxic. It has very low VOCs and um, so it's not harmful to breathe. Uh, it's water based, very easy to oh, clean easy up. Oh, easy to clean up. Right. Okay, so. It's pre-mixed, where do you begin? Well, you do want to stir it. It is pre-mixed, but you want to stir it. You don't want to shake it because it'll put a lot of air bubbles into it. Um, so you're just going to um, stir it for a little while to make sure all the pigment is nice and really mixed up. Now, I like to use it, um, you can use it, either use it you know, as full strength, um, especially on curved surfaces. Um, this stuff really adheres to a curved surface. It doesn't so if you need something a little thicker, more viscous, you can... Mm -hmm. Leave it full strength. You leave it full strength, and um, especially on your curved surfaces where it, it'll, um, it's less likely to run and kind of goo off. All right. Really. Uh, but you can water it down. If you have things with a really high detail that you need to get into tiny little spaces, mm -hmm. you can water it down. Yeah, now I notice it comes in a lot of beautiful colors. Can you blend colors too? You can totally blend colors, just like you would your markers or paint, regular All right. paint. If you notice there's not a brown, so you can take a bunch of colors and make brown. Brown's pretty so, easy to make, right? It is, it is. So um, what you're going to do is you can use a brush, um, and I'm painting on a board that I will actually put into the oven, the toaster. So this oven. is a solderite board that's safe to get hot. Right, right. It's going to be okay. I can reuse it all the time. And um, you do want to. I did prep this surface here um, with some alcohol. I made sure there's no grease on there. Uh, so the pieces do need to be clean. And you can go ahead and paint your details in there. Now, what if you make a mistake? Well, if you make a mistake. If you, uh, you can instantly wash it off Easy. in water, or you can let it, if it dries and you notice you made a mistake, you can you scrub it off. It, when it dries, it'll, it'll actually be pretty tough. Um, um, you can use a brush. I like to actually use toothpicks because they're disposable, and I can really get into detail that way and just manipulate it. And if you can see, you know, even though my surface is vertical, it's clinging to it. It's not just Yeah, and it really right is off. an opaque color. Uh huh. You can see on these that you've already painted how gorgeous it is. It really brings out the detail. Right. Now, you're doing this in the crevices, but what if you wanted to do it on the surface of something curved? Same deal? Same deal. Just paint so right like on, on this button, you can just, would you use a brush there or would you use a toothpick? It's a personal preference. You can use a foam brush, paint brush, uh, however you like to work. Um, like I said, I use toothpicks a lot because they're disposable and I'm a little lazy, <laughs> so I can just throw them away. Now, one of the most important things about using this is it has to be dry before it goes in the oven. So go ahead and wait 24 hours. Just set it aside. Just set it aside oh, and let it dry completely. Oh, but we're so impatient. We just have to wait. Got to have some patience. All right, let's take a look at these that you finished up. Looks like a button. That's a great way to just completely change the look. It totally changed the look, and that's when I thinned it down a little bit to get into those nice little places. And what about this stone? We drilled this on an earlier segment for our show. Drilled now it. Now it looks like you added some paint. Added some black, put it in the oven. Looks great. Great. And the ring, you really brought out the detail right. with the paint. Um, uh, sometimes it's really hard to get that kind of black with oxidizers. So I wondered a, about that. So this would be a really great substitution for that. And the grapes, making it look a little more realistic there. Right. I still have yet to do some green, but I can go back in and add the green later and go ahead and refire it. Oh, okay. So you could you can always add to it and mm -hmm. bake it again. Yeah. So you can do this paint on anything that will withstand the temperature of the oven. It's got to take the temperature. So yeah. it's not limited to metal things. You can do the stone. You could do glass. Mm -hmm. You have another piece here with the recessed areas that are black. Right. So again, that's a place where if you didn't want to patina, you add the paint. Right, exactly. And then these glass marbles. Yeah. Great idea. Made some eyeballs. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. This is perfect. Thank you. We learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this season on All About the Beads. We hope you've learned a few new techniques and tried some new materials. We've been getting some fantastic suggestions for new projects on our Facebook page. So watch for your favorite jewelry designs next season on Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels.